you're going to love hearing about the return of the gods with Jonathan Kahn. You know, for every god or idol that we've seen throughout history, there is always a dark spirit tied to it. And the same dark spirits that led God's people astray in ancient Israel is now undermining the very foundational beliefs of our families, our churches, and our nation today. Here to reveal more behind this and how we can combat it, let's welcome best-selling author, prophetic voice, and our dear friend, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Hi. Oh, it's always so good to have you. An honor to be here. Always, it's like coming home. Oh, Aww. we yeah. love you so My much. Guys. And I'll tell you what, I have uh, listened to my producer talk about this book. <laughs> And she is so excited about it, uh, The Return of the Gods. And I know, Becca, you're excited to talk about this as well. Yes. I, I mean, I even remember last time you were here, you alluded to this project. Yes, and I was yes. like, I cannot wait for I this remember. book to be done. And yep. I think out of all the ones you've done, I think this is going to be my favorite one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to read you something. Yeah. And then I want you to jump in because okay. it goes right along with okay. what you're um, going to be talking about. But... This was sent to me by a partner. You partners are amazing. You send me every news article to tell me what's going on, things I would never see if it wasn't for you. So thank you. Uh, this is um, someone that sent this in. Uh, D.C. Children's Hospital offered gender-affirming hysterectomies for kids, uh, but the audio and deleted web page, of course, uh, reveal, uh, or they actually took it down as soon as people started finding yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But it says the Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. offered gender-affirming hysterectomies for kids between the ages of 0 to 21. A recently mm. deleted web page shows this information. An archived web page from August 18th on Children's National Hospital's website listed gender-affirming medical care, gender-affirming mm. hysterectomy among the services offered for patients, between the ages of zero to 21 through the hospital's gynecology program. The webpage was recently modified and no longer states that the program offers gender affirming hysterectomies for kids. And uh, in a phone call with hospital staff, the libs of TikTok founder asked how young, how young someone can be in order for doctors to perform a gender affirming hysterectomy. The worker said that hysterectomies have been performed on children who are younger than the age of 16. Mm -hmm. Ask about the recording. A hospital spokesperson said the call reflects a call with hospital operators. And so they're trying to get out of that because it was on the website and now they're, they've taken it down because there's been such mm -hmm. outcry. You know mm -hmm. what? We have a very mm -hmm. small window mm -hmm. to cry out. And that's really what your book is mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. So. Talk about, just start with, what, what, which of the gods do you want to start oh. with? Well, I could say this, this is like madness, you know, what you just, what you yeah. just read. Yeah, yeah, and It's happening all over. Happening in Boston, same thing happened. The yeah. hospital then took it down. Um, it, is, it is just, it is crazy, and they call it gender affirming. It's the opposite. It's gender destroying, you know. Yeah. Um, but people are saying, you know, what's going on? What's mm -hmm. happening in the world? And even, it's not just, not just Christians, conservatives and liberals, even old school liberals are saying, this is madness. What's mm -hmm. happening? So what this is and what we, we talked about last time is, you know, I felt I knew this is the time because we are in this window, as you said. What if behind all these things, all this craziness, all this madness, all these things that have been happening to transform America lies this ancient mystery that goes back to ancient Babylon, ancient Mesopotamia. What if the gods that, you know, we think about as fiction, we think about as, you know, these are just fictional things. What if there's actually something real to them? What if these are real entities? And what if we could know which gods they were? What if they returned to America? What if they returned to now? What would happen to America? And, and if we could know which gods we're dealing with, we, can, we, we would have, first of all, an advantage to do that. And what if this is affecting every believer? Because what, what we're talking about right now affects every single person watching right now. And, and you're talking family. about um, little gods. We're talking about yes. dark spirits. Yes. We're talking about demonic spirits that infiltrated ancient Israel. That's They're right. still around, folks. Yeah. They're still around, yeah. and they have come to perform some of the same duties that they performed with ancient That's Israel. A, exactly, and exactly. One of the things is that people don't realize, I mean, the Bible speaks about God. So this, there's one God, but then there are these things that are called gods. Well, the, the Bible actually reveals a mystery, and sometimes we miss it. In the, in the Hebrew Scriptures and in the New Testament, 
Hebrew scripture that says that when they were worshiping these gods, it says they were actually worshiping the Shedim, Hebrew word that speaks of entities or spirits. Mm -hmm. And they're always, they're always evil. You know? And then when it was translated into Greek, they use the word daimonia, which actually Paul uses when he says the Gentiles or the pagans worship these things. They're actually worshiping the daimonia. We get the word demon, demonic from it. So when we, mm -hmm. we think about gods, there's actually something very real about it. And when you look back, you know, think about this. If all the pagan world, like everywhere in the world, they were all worshiping gods. I mean, except for Israel, and then they turn. But all around the world, there were, why? You know, all the, and so what it means is if these were spirits behind them, they're all given to the spirits. They were all possessed. All these, all these cultures were possessed. Even Western culture, you know, we, we probably, back then was possessed except for Israel. So, so the thing is that, and when you look back at these, these pagan God worship, gods worshiping things, you see the signs of possession. Even their, their high priests, the oracles, they would shake, they would, they would mm -hmm. utter these things. So that's all there. And the right. only thing that changed that was Jesus. When Jesus came, yes. you know, he had the power, it says ekbalao in, in, in Greek, to cast out the spirits. And when he sent the gospel into the world, they, it was like God coming head to head with the gods. And when the, well, that's why when the Christians came in the Roman Empire, there was such warfare because the gods were warring against them. You know, they said, you know, bow down or we kill you to the gods. That was the issue, you know. Yeah. And so there's all this, there was this, this, this warfare going on. And by God's grace, the gospel prevailed. So now think about what that means. If the gospel prevailed, all the gods started departing. You know, the temples were empty, Zeus, yeah. all, the, all gone. Yes. But that means that the spirits were being cast out. Mm -hmm. So this was the greatest mass exorcism in history. And that's why our culture, Western culture, is unique because it's the only culture that was exercised, free. You know, when you go to other cultures, you see these things. So that puts us in a very you know, unique thing. But then there's a warning that Jesus gave. Remember the parable when he said, he said that a spirit comes out of a man, it look, goes around looking for a place, yeah. doesn't find it, says it's gonna go back, I'm gonna go back to my house, to the guy, but it goes back, finds it empty and clean, says I'm gonna bring back my friends, seven, seven, seven more evil spirits worse than the first. Now we picture that, that's talking about a man, and, yeah. and it is. But he's actually says, so it will be with this generation, mm. this generation. So what, what, here's, the, here's, the, here's the thing to put it all together. And that is that if you take that to the largest thing, our culture was delivered like that man from the spirits. We, we were exercised. But here's the warning. If we ever turn away from God, if we ever turn back, if we ever turn Western civilization, America, if we ever turn, then the spirits are going to return to our culture. Then the gods that were cast out are going to, and that's exactly what's been happening. Okay, so let's go back and yeah. let's talk about some of the gods. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Baal yes. with ancient Israel, and let's talk about how Baal has infiltrated yeah. America, yes, and the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I talk, in, the, in the book I talk about the Dark Trinity, and he's the first because you, when you read the Bible, Baal is always first. Baal comes in; he's like that spirit that says, "I'm going to bring my friends." So he comes first. And Lucifer always copies yeah. everything, like yeah. you said, the Dark Trinity. Yeah, yeah. And we know the Father, right. Son, and Holy Spirit. He, yes. he always copies everything. That's right, that's yeah. right. For and, and actually, the name for Lucifer, you know, when, when Jesus said Beelzebub, that comes from Baal. <laughs> Baal, these are masks, you know, these are masks here. So yeah, so Baal is the one who first, he's the one who came into Israel and turned them away from God. He's the substitute God. He's the anti-God. He's the one who said, I'm going to give you prosperity, turn to me. And he was, and he was, he, he turned them from God to materialism, to sensuality. Sexuality, to de to vulgar vulgarize their culture, so he comes there. So what would happen if Baal came back? You know, if Amer America, remember, America was patterned after Israel. If it turns away from God, this is coming back. So when did we really start turning away from God? Look at the early '60s. We say, let's take prayer out of school, little right. thing, right? Let's take the word out. Well, when we did that, we opened the door, and the spirit of Baal or Baal that he comes in, it, and I call him in the book the possessor because that's what the name means. He comes in to possess America. And and so what did Baal do? He came in and he and he he seeks to the first thing he seeks to drive God out of everything. He warred against God. Remember, you know, in, in the days of Elijah. So he so all of a sudden God there's a spirit driving God out of everything. God at the public square, out of the a culture, out of you know God used to be everywhere. You know, in, in American culture. Yeah. You know, think about that. On you know, our money, in God we trust. On our money, yeah. yeah. And, and when like you look back in the 1950s, you know, we would say, well, this is a Christian nation. You know, but Baal's the 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 agenda of Baal is to take a Christian nation and turn it into a pagan nation. So what happens? So he starts driving that out. But also, it, it's infiltrated us in deep ways to paganize us, like even wokeism. I'll give you an example. And back then, you have one, if you have one God, you have one truth. 
But if you have a lot of gods, then you have many truths. There's no one truth. Everything really, I have my own authentic truth. I have my authentic truth. Mm -hmm. You know, when, in the pagan world, you could actually make your God. You actually mm -hmm. make your truth. That's why we have many pronouns now. M many pronouns, it's right. Insane. And, yeah, yeah. And, it's a, and we have to say, well, this, if a man says I'm a woman, well, that's his authentic truth. If he says I'm a tree, that's his authentic truth. That's paganism. That's what they did back then. They made their own truth. You know, and also when you take God out, Everything becomes God. Sex becomes God. Money becomes God. We're in this thing. The Idolatry. Name, the, everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, at the same time in the 60s, when, when you do that, you start then seeing New Age. All yeah. these things start coming in, Eastern things. That's all paganism. And the name Baal or Baal means Lord, Possessor, Master. So what's happened to America, you know, the promise was, hey, I'm going to give you freedom. It always comes in like, hey, be open-minded. But in the end, we end up being possessed. We end up being, we end up being driven by, we're more addicted now. We're more driven than ever. We have many bells. And I'll give you one like sign of bail. The, the sign of bail back then was the, a bull. He was represented by, there's supposed to be power, bronze molten bull. Well, actually, if you go to New York City, you yeah. will see the sign of bail. That massive bronze molten bull is the sign of bail that he's taken over the culture right near Wall Street. And actually, what do we, you know, he was the god of prosperity. What do we call our, what do we call a good market? A bull market. He was bull. That's Baal. They actually recreate, they took part of the temple of Baal and recreated it in New York City as well. So we are a, a culture that has been possessed by the spirit of Baal. And that's what turned us away. But he's only the first. And, and of course, we can only give a taste of, you know, we're only yeah, giving a taste, but right. there's another. Go. <laughs> okay. Yes. The, the next one is a she. It's a goddess, and this is, this is called in the book the Enchantress. And when you look in the Bible about when Israel turned away from God, first is Baal, but then there's the next one is Ashtorah. It was his Baal and Ashtorah. Ashtorah was also known as Ishtar. Mm -hmm. She's all over the place. She, she's also known as Aphrodite in the yep. Greek, also known as Venus. And she's the god of sexual immorality. And so what, what happens is, she's actually called the prostitute or harlot goddess. And what happens is Baal comes up, she's actually known as the wife of Baal in, in the mythology. When first Baal comes, then the next one to come in is this goddess. And so what's gonna happen if she comes in? Well, what would happen is something's gonna happen in America with sexuality. There's gonna be a sexual revolution. And that's exactly what happens, like clockwork. First Baal, first turn from God, take him out of the schools, take him out of the... And then comes the goddess. Then comes sexual. There comes the sexual revolution. She was a harlot goddess. So therefore, you know, a prostitute, you know, takes sex out of marriage and puts it into the culture. So our culture becomes sexualized. Yeah. Marriage becomes weakened. That is all the goddess. And in fact, uh, you know, back then when you called, if you call, she was called the prostitute. In Greek, the name is porn or porne. We get pornography from this goddess. The first pornography in the world was the writings of, about this goddess. She's the one who multiplied images of naked people back then. So the spirit of Ashtoreth, she possesses a culture by seducing it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why people are so, you know, are so, uh, you know, addicted to pornography. That's the goddess. And here's another thing. We get the word erotic, you know, from eroticism, like where our cultures yeah. become sexualized. Well, that comes from the Greek eros. In, in mythology... Eros was a god who was the son of this goddess. So this goddess produces er erotic, produces porn, you know, and she's also known as a sorceress. I mean, she was the goddess of witchcraft. So yeah. what happens is when the same time, 60s, same time you have the sexual revolution, you have revival of witchcraft in America. There are more yeah. witches now than there are Presbyterians in America. You know, and, you and she's also the goddess of intoxication. She seduces through, so you have a revival of addiction, drugs. You know, there's more drug abuse now than there has ever been. You know, so all these things come with a goddess. She is the seducer. So that, and I'm just giving a little taste, but that's the second goddess. And there, there's much more to her, but that's a little taste of it. Okay, so just continue on <laughs> yeah. with all the different. What's the third one? Yeah. yeah. The third is called the destroyer. And, oh. and, and this is the one that, that, you know, if you go to pagan culture, you'll see they, they offer, it's common to offer up human sacrifice. It's actually mm -hmm. common to offer up children. If you were a child back then, you were not safe in pagan society. You were not safe in any way. And they would, they, you could be offered up at birth. You could be offered up after birth. You could be offered up before birth. Abortion was back then. That was a pagan thing. What happened? The only thing that, well, actually even go before that. So when Israel turned away from God, what did they do? They started offering up their children. It says they passed their children through the fire to this God who was called, we know, 
Molech, who's the God, the God they put their children on the altar. And so here's the thing. When the gospel came, it drove that all out. The only thing that ended child sacrifice was the gospel. Yeah. That, that's it. That ended human sacrifice. But here's the warning. If we turn away from God, it's coming back. And at the same time, at the same moment that we start turning away from God, you have Baal turning away from God. You have the goddess, sexual revolution, leads right to the third. The third one is abortion comes to America. Moloch comes to America. And all of a sudden, 1970, it's abortion on demand. 1973, Roe. And so all of a sudden, we start, we are offering up our children to the gods, just like this is paganism. Yeah. We're offering, and I said, well, how can you compare? They offered up thousands. We've offered up 63 million yeah. of them. So this, remember, they come back stronger. They come back seven times or eight times. And the other thing is that when I looked, when I looked at the ancient way they did this child sacrifice, yeah. that's that links up to what's happening now. There's a certain way they did it. There's a certain way they that the parents did it. That's the way it's happening now. Actually, I'll, I'll throw this in, that one of the things was that if you look back, the, the poor children were more offered up than rich children. They mm -hmm. actually were, were they actually paid for poor children to be offered up. Today, Malik, you know, he's a number one, he's a racist and he's a, and he's against the poor. More poor children are being offered up to him than and than than any other children. Same God, same principality. Wow. So, you know, we talked last time you were here about Roe v. Wade. Yes. And you said that was huge for America. Yes. And you you write this book in hopes yeah. that people watching and people listening will awaken to yes. what to what's going on yes. and how that what happened in ancient, ancient Israel is being repeated. Yeah. And the only thing that can turn that is a great awakening. The only thing that can save America is revival. Yes, revival. Yeah. When I when I finished the book, you know. The day I finished the book, and by the way, this is, a, this is again, obviously it's to empower God's people um, and to wake up and to, you know, not, not just to be like a mind-blowing thing, but to actually arm yourself because you're dealing with this. Everyone's dealing with it. And if you don't know what you're dealing with, it's very hard to fight. You know, everyone, you know, not just every person, but every family, every relative, there's always, there's people in our lives. So the thing is that we need to know. And the thing is that, that this is about against the altars. And the greatest altar we have to the gods is, it was, is abortion, actually the altar. On the day that I, f I finished it on June 24th, the day that I finished it, abortion was over, Roe versus Wade was overturned. The altar was broken. Wild. Which was huge for huge. you, huge, huge for you. And you know, what I keep sensing as you're talking is that, you know, God is calling you into this battle. Like you were designed and created to be alive right now to help stand up for truth and to arm yourself, I mean, people not only need to reach out to those around them, but people need to get involved in the political arena. I know you believe yeah, in that yeah, very strongly. Yeah, yes. They need to vote. Yes. I mean, yeah. because right now with the administration that we have in power, mm -hmm. then, and I'm not saying God's a Republican or Democrat. Don't hear okay. that because I'm not saying that. Obviously, he's not either one. But I'm just saying that we have to look at policies yes. because policies, policies affect people. And if they affect people, we're going to be concerned about that. Yeah. And so we have yeah. to look at the policies that are most aligned with the Word of God. It's not a popular message, but I'm going to keep preaching yeah. it. I yeah. mean, yeah. I'm going to keep talking about it. But I mean, it is it is an awakening for the body of Christ in a way like never before. We, we have got to stand up now. Yes. And, and, you know, think about it. All these things we're talking about were changed 2,000 years ago by Christians, by the gospel through God's people in Rome. All these things we're talking about. We're watching almost like the reversal of everything that happened when Rome was Christianized. We're watching the de-Christianization. So we, we were affecting it then. You know, there's not, you know, we are not of politics. We're not of the world, but we are a light to the world. We're a light yeah. to politics. We're, if we're not affecting, what are we doing here? Why yeah. are we here? So yeah, God, you know, we've been on the defense, you know, so, so long. I mean, so much of the body is just, okay, I want to talk about, it. if we don't talk about it, it's just the, the gods are coming in. Yeah. That's what's happening. And that tells you, because when you get, when, when, when God gets out, when you create a vacuum, he come, the, the gods come in. We have to bring God into everything.